Oh, good job! <laughs> What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an awesome day. It is Sunday, February 18th here in South Georgia, and you already know what time it is. It is tater time today. So in our last video, we talked about whether you should or shouldn't cut up your seed taters as opposed to planting them whole. We got all ours cut up, talked about the optimal size for a seed tater piece, and today we're going to get them in the ground. So we're going to be planting three rows of taters right here in one of our no-till plots. And then we're going to stick as many as we can of a couple other varieties in these two long skinny raised beds that we got ready a couple weeks ago. And so as I've told you in previous videos, ideal tater planting time is going to be a few weeks before your average last frost date in late winter early spring doesn't have to be exactly two weeks before your average last frost state but that's a good time frame to aim for another thing you want to consider is how much rain is in the forecast you don't want to plant taters if you're about to get a bunch of rain because that can cause them to rot in the ground and looking at our forecast for the next 10 days or so like i said today is sunday looks like we might get a little bit of rain this friday but we're pretty much clear of precipitation in the forecast for a good eight or ten days which means it's a perfect time for us to be planting and so as you'll see here in a minute we're going to be doing things a little differently in this in-ground plot versus those raised beds kind of showing you multiple ways to plant taters so in this in-ground plot where we're going to put three rows first thing we need to do is add a little fertilizer and make some furrows now we've already added some pre-plant fertilizer to those raised beds. We did that a couple weeks ago. Also added some worm castings from our worm farm, some worms, and some mushroom compost. As far as pre-plant fertilizer for tater goes, you just want to use something that's relatively balanced. We'll be using the coop grow, but whatever you can find that has relatively equal percentages of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium should work. Now the way we normally do this in the in-ground garden plots is we take the wheel hoe, we make a furrow, then we put our pre-plant fertilizer, in this case the coop grow, down in that furrow, then stick our taters down in there. Lately we've been getting a lot of questions about using synthetic stuff like 10, 10, 10, or 13, 13, 13. People are wondering can they put that in the furrow and then put taters on top of it or put the taters down first and put that synthetic fertilizer on top, whether it will burn them or not and I can't really say because I've never tried that but we're going to do a little different today the way I think you should probably do it if you're going to use synthetics that way you don't have to worry about if they would burn them or not so we're going to put our fertilizer down first then make our furrow so it gets kind of incorporated into the soil and I think that's probably a good way to do it if you're worried about the synthetic stuff burning your seed taters. So this spot here that we're working with is probably about 12 foot wide, 12 to 15 foot wide, something like that. Putting three rows here, I usually like to put my rows at least three foot apart. Gives me plenty of soil for healing later. So what we're going to do is just take one feed scoop of coop grow per intended row, try to sprinkle it along there in a straight line, and that'll tell us where we need to make our furrows. Alright, so we got fertilizer down for our three rows right there, right there. And then one right over there. Now all we need to do is get the wheel hoe, make some furrows. Got my tater help out here. He's over there pre-gaming with some strawberries, getting some nice energy so he can help. All right, so not too bad for eyeballing, not perfectly equidistant rows, but good enough. Got some nice, soft, rich soil there. Gonna be perfect for growing taters. And besides going back and looking at this video, one way I like to help myself remember what I planted is to plant them in alphabetical order. So Baltic Rose, Huckleberry Gold, and then Sharp Mirror right there. And look, we got some more help on the way. You ready to plant taters a little bit? First time? All right. It's been a long time until I plant taters. It's been a long time since you planted taters? You about yeah. forgot how to do it? All right, so let's show you here. So we're gonna start out with this Sharpo Mira variety. Let's put one right there. When we put them down in the dirt, we wanna kinda press them down in there a little bit. That way they don't, they don't flip over when we cover them up here in a minute. 
because we want those little sprouts towards the sun. So we want to put this cut side down, kind of seat them in there real good. Got your little stick right here. That's about eight inches long or so. So use that stick and it'll tell you how far apart to put them, about like that. Think you can handle that? Yeah. All right, move your stick over. There you go. I think we're gonna have plenty of seed taters. Can I see help? A little bit. Dad, Dad, Dad you wanna help too? Here. Put it down in there. No, in there, right there. Put it right there. Oh, good job! <laughs> We'll pick them up. We'll pick them up. Okay, move your stick. Oh, okay. The, uh, thank you, Essie. Yeah, she already laid your potato down there, didn't she? <laughs> oh, Essie. <laughs> Daddy, <you don't> keep... <laughs> here, come here. Come down here, Essie. Move your stick, Tata. <laughs> here you go. Here, you can come throw them. Here. <laughs> throw them right here. Throw them. Ah, St Stella just took one. Stella. Stella. <laughs> Stella, come here. Come here. Stella, you can't you can't take all the seed taters. Stella, uh-uh, come here. Come here. These ain't dog. These ain't balls, okay? <laughs> no, it's a slimer potato. Okay, little bit. Hold on. Why don't you get out of the furrow? There you go. Come on, come on. Yeah, here, put it right here. Thank you. Good job! There you go. Good there you job. Go. Here. Let's get this second row in. Here. Put this one down. Put it down. Right there. Oh, oh yeah. good job. Yeah. 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 Try again. Here, try, try, there you go. Yay, there you go. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Here's your potato. A little bit's gonna have them covered up for us. <laughs> I know. <laughs> there you got it, Tyler. I hope those wasn't nice clothes. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know she's gonna get dirty. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I can't eat them yet. We gotta wait about 100 days. Then we can't eat them. Okay. <laughs> 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 Help you, oh no, a little bit, a little bit for the potato out here. Yeah, yeah. Come here, Essie. <laughs> Come on. Come, Come here. Go, go with mama. Come here, Essie. Come here. Potato. Yeah, yeah. Potato. Can you say potato? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. You okay? Uh oh. You can get some. Yeah, look, oh, he almost Stella. covered up this whole potato. It's okay. Stella. <laughs> I got to cover it up. Sweet girl. Be easy, good girl. Alright, so we got all three of those rows down in the in ground plot. I'll come back and cover those with the wheel hoe a little later. Let's move on over to the raised beds now. Alright, so in the raised beds here, the way we did this last year is we made some trenches in here. And then as the potatoes sprouted and grew, we backfilled the trenches and then healed them. That worked really, really well. It's going to be hard to do that in this long skinny bed. And because it's so full here, I can make it, maybe get one trench down the middle. But I want to plant more taters in here than that. So we're going to do it a little differently. We're going to just use this little dibbler. And we're going to make us a hole and just kind of poke our seed taters down in that hole. And put as many as we can in this bed. I noticed some of those worms in here earlier that we put back when we were flipping these beds. They seem <coughs> they seem to have done a really good job of chewing up that vegetation that we buried. So we've got some beautiful, beautiful soil here. There's one of those worms right there. All right, so we're gonna try to plant the Charlotte and Rose Gold in this bed. So just start by making some dibbles here a little bit. Put one in this hole. Just like that, and we're gonna plant them in here pretty thick. We noticed last year in our other raised beds that you know planting them thick didn't really hurt yield here. So I tried that. As many as we can, yeah. Stick them down this hole right here. Okay. Uh, no, 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 not that variety yet. Here, please put that over there, Mama. Someone's down there emptying your bed out. Uh, 
So yeah, she's making sure we got some <laughs> good, good tater dirt here. Let put put the last one right there. I didn't even know deep down there you can't even see it, Dad. All right, a little bit. Here put go. it in the hole. Yeah, put it in there. Put it right there. Don't run off with it. Okay. <laughs> oh no. She just leaves though. It doesn't. Oh. Okay. One, two, three. There you go. All right, so we got rose gold and charlotte in that other bed. For this bed here, it's the same size. We're gonna do purple viking down this side. And then for the other side, I've got some leftovers from those varieties we planted in the in-ground garden. So we'll just scatter those there. Have a little hodgepodge on that side and a single variety on this side. All right, Tidy, you ready to go? Yeah. All right. Put okay. it in the hole. There you go. All right. Okay, this one's big. That's a big one. Get in there. All right. Good job. Oh, that good. But from the side. That's some kind of root or something there. It'd be okay. Probably left over from that mustard we had planted here. All right. We're good on that row with the purple Vikings. Let's go get some of those other leftover ones we got. All right. So you can see here we had a decent amount of taters left over from our in-ground planting. Usually five pounds is just the right amount for a 30 foot row but had a lot more left over this year i don't know if my seed taters were bigger or maybe i was a little more frugal with cutting them but got more leftovers than we usually have i saw right though we're about to find a home for most of them right here all right titus let's do these purple ones dad i got a pull it out of carrot bit. yeah you got a weed too yeah a weed and a carrot a weed carrot all right Let's put these purple ones right here. Right here? Right there. So uh, right okay, here. okay, I just need to put some right there. I yeah. dropped one. You got too many, didn't you? Put one in that hole. Oh, look how big that one is. Well, that's a big old piece, ain't it? Okay, I can't even put it in there. That's all right. Other variety here. Yeah, so it looks like an apple went to plant down. Oh, yeah, these, that, do kind of, that does kind of look like an apple, don't it? But everybody knows it potato because no apple has that kind of name. All right. We are done. I know, a little bit taking one. A little bit? You want to take one home with you? Uh-huh. One of those two? Okay. Yeah. All right, so we got both raised beds planted now. We put about one and a half times more seed taters in this bed than we did that bed over there. So that'll be interesting to kind of keep an eye on, see if we end up with some smaller taters in this bed where we packed them in there a little tighter. And I went ahead and got our in-ground tater rows covered up. You can see there we've got a good little bit of space between the rows, which is what we want because we'll end up hilling these taters about 12 to 18 inches high. So we need a good bit of soil between those rows so we can pull it up around those tater plants. And hopefully, as you could tell there from our little family tater planting circus, taters are a great way to get kids and the entire family involved in the backyard garden. Taters are one of the easiest things to grow in the backyard garden. Yes, there are techniques and strategies we can use to really optimize yields or harvest, but it's hard to mess up planting and growing taters. Even if we planted these things upside down, they would still sprout and grow. They just might take a few more days to emerge from the soil. So you don't have to be that exact with it, especially if you're planting in containers or raised beds, just stick them down in there. Yeah, that trench method works well. It takes a little more effort to do that, but you can also just plunge them down into the dirt there and they'll probably be just fine. And so now we just play the waiting game. We won't give these any water until we start seeing leaves popping out of the soil. We want to keep the soil nice and dry so these seed taters don't rot. So it should take about a couple weeks and we should start seeing some leaves popping out of the soil. And if you've never grown taters before, just kind of give you an idea of what will happen here. So we've got our seed tater piece down in the soil. Got this little sprout here where the leaves will eventually form on top of the soil but it will start to form roots right here pretty soon right on top of this seed tater piece it will look like a little spider 
so those roots will form right around where that sprout is and they'll connect out into the soil there and anchor down and the sprout will grow up and that's where our leaves will come from we'll get roots and leaves from anywhere we have a sprout on any particular seed tater piece so we just showed you two completely different ways to plant taters there the way we did it in the in-ground garden versus the way we did it in those containers a lot of different ways to plant taters not necessarily a right or wrong way we should get really good harvest from the in-ground plot and the containers in about 100 days or so the main thing to remember with taters is you want some really nice fluffy soft soil that's what they like you want to give them some balanced fertilizer we give them some at planting we'll give them some more when we heal the taters a little bit and pull some dirt up around those plants and last year one thing we did that really helped is we watered ours more than we had in the past now i don't use drip irrigation on my taters but i will come out here with an overhead wand and just give them a little splash i don't soak them down too much but every few days or so i will give them a little splash sometimes the tater plants won't tell you they need water but i could really tell the benefit of it last year giving them some regular water especially there towards the end seems to help them size up nicely and help you get buckets and buckets of taters when you dig them so we'll give you an update on these as soon as we start seeing some vegetation emerging from the soil i'm pretty confident we should get some nice full rows because we cut our seed taters in advance they're nice and healed over we've got some good sprouts on these and we don't have any rain in the forecast any significant rain in the forecast for the next 10 days but i always get a little bit nervous so i would imagine about seven days or so i'll come out here and scratch around a little bit just checking for roots just because you know i start worrying a little bit even though there's really nothing to worry about so i hope you enjoyed the video today don't forget if you want to try some of these varieties that we're growing you can get those on wood prairie's website and be sure to use the code lazy dog farm to get a discount and if you missed that last video where we talked about why you should or shouldn't cut up your seed taters you can watch that right here so check that out and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm